Good evening, Free Enterprise fans, and welcome to tonight's race between Ikear and Pancras. My name is Baka Shinobi, and I am joined by Martin Broadcloak. How are you doing this evening, Martin? I am having a fantastic Thursday evening. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm thinking these runners are hoping that this Thursday evening is better than their Wednesday evening, as uh, if you haven't seen their previous race, let's just say it was a bit of a rude one. I, I, I feel like that they, they may still be having issues with that. They, they may be having flashbacks. Hopefully it doesn't turn into seed blending today, but <laughs> after that debacle, it, it's a possibility, Baka. Yeah, the, the, their last seed was quite rude. They, uh, they got the real generous end of that uh, money starter kit with 29,000 gold. And um, I don't know if you can go much lower than that, but I don't think our runners are interested in finding out. I, but you know what? We can always try true i mean always happy to hit new lows and highs as uh these runners if there's anyone's going to go and set them it's these ikir is a long-standing member of the community and has been going in in these terms for years now and pancras made a big splash in the scene in the zima zone 3 and uh came back from a 4-2 and two record and having won the first race is one win away from potentially advancing to the next round. Ikear does need to go and get two wins to advance at this point. I'm I'm looking forward to this. It's you, you know, being obviously both of us being racers, there there's that different mode you go into when it's win or go home. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see what gear Ikear finds in this race and if we see something amazing come out of it. And speaking of amazing, we do have our objectives, which are the Forge, Hefka Cole Forge, the Legend Sword with the Adamant, which is Classic Forge, which means you will not give an X scale, but in return, an X scale has been added to the key item pool. We do have to complete Cave Magnus, trade away the Pink Tail, and the two random objectives are defeat Boss Imps and the Dark Imps, and get Yang, but we only have to complete four of five. And yeah, I think with that Rosa Star, I agree with you, I want to find some very nice gear. What are you hoping for? I, yeah, I mean, depending who that second character is, um, and obviously, you know, Rose's starting kit, I mean, you know, in a perfect world, we always hope Archer Bow, maybe some Charm or Mute Arrows, and we're off and running. The reality is, it's probably not going to be that good. So, yeah, loot early, loot often, find a point that you're happy with, and then go. Speaking of going, that's where runners are, as, a. Uh... Let's see who we have for our second character, who's giving us our item, and what our first key item is. That looks like a quack kit and an antlion. And a pan. So getting underground, we'll have a bunch of dense key item checks. And I, I feel like the game decided like 29,000 was enough, so it's going to give you 30 this time. That's <laughs> not very funny, but I appreciate the effort there. I mean... It's proving that it's not going lower than 29. It, it, it could be some science for our runners. I'm sure they'll be very interested in being taking part in that experiment. No, no, this is like the price is right. We're that guy that bids a dollar more. No, that does not work. <laughs> Look, if, if this keeps up in 60 races, they'll go and probably hit the maximum. Yeah, exactly. Wait, 60 more races? Oh, wow. Oh. Uh... I mean, maybe That's... it takes a few more events for them to reach that far, but yeah, I'm sure they're up for that uh, type of long deal. Yeah. Well, it looks like we have some deviation already. We've got uh, Ikear and Baron in with, oh, hi. Oh, well, hi. That's easy. Objective number five is uh, very visible, and that D-Mist is a uh, bonus key item, as on these flags in the vanilla game, you would go to Edward to get the Twin Harp, Mm -hmm. And these flags, uh, that's a little too free because you have the Enterprise so early. So instead, you have to go and defeat Demist, up Rose's mother. Mm -hmm. It looks like on Pancras' side, Pancras decided to do the uh, the Evelyn play early, hoping for some decent loot for starting characters. Um, because we are running T-Pro, um, Evelyn, great source of Tier 4, Tier 5, possibly Tier 6 loot. Yeah, that T-Pro, we do go in wait locations based on uh, how far away they are from anything important, like this Watery Pass has nothing terribly important on these flags, and this Evelyn has uh, also not something important, but also lots of trapped chests that uh, is causing Pancras to reset and come back in. It's a good thing to know where those are. Um, you may see those come in play, uh, because obviously, you know, no Tier 7s. 
um, short of like the pink tail or, you know, via an objective, um, those three chests have a 40% chance of hitting a tier seven. So, you know, got not to curse the runners, but, you know, you run through a seed with Cecil and a fire sword the entire time. Maybe you decide, hey, maybe I want to try and, you know, snipe an Excalibur or a crystal sword or an Avenger. And knowing where those chests are will save you some time in the long run. Yeah, and you're certainly not going to go to any shops. We do have C standard on, but or S standard on, excuse me. But um, thirty thousand gold as a starter kit is not a lot of money. You can go and, and you can't even afford half of a lightsaber with that. Yeah, not not only that, but because well, shopkeepers have decided that you know after we've sold them everything over you know the uh, the Swiss series, uh, they've decided that they're just not going to give us money anymore. So, um, unfortunately, you're starting money short of what bosses give you and maybe some uh, random encounters. Uh, that, pun intended, is where the buck stops. Yeah, and I here trying to go and loot Damsian Castle and found four chests that didn't have zero gold. Because that cell zero extends to treasure chests. Uh, we've uh, had a bit of a money shortage after everyone had to buy back all those rune rings from Swiss. I'm not. I'm not guilty of that. No, I. I didn't sell seven rune rings in every seed. I now, now, now. It's fine. Just the uh, you know, we converted. We liquidated that uh, starting money from rune rings to just straight cash, and then gave you no more <laughs> until you beat up some <laughs> bosses for them. Just taking their lunch money at this point. Mm -hmm. But ooh, Ancraz does start with a crossbow on Palom, which is a rather nice find because. If you are so inclined, you can go and back row Rosa with that. Yeah. The back row glitch is uh, if you equip a long range weapon, congratulations, you now have the long range weapon, long range bit applied to every weapon. <laughs> oh, unfortunately for Pankraz, that's not exactly a character up there. No. So, because we don't have dupes on, so it's, it's a nice sight, but that's about it. Yeah, that is one of the big changes between Swiss and Bracket Flags. No dupes is turned on, Cell Zero gets turned on, Treasures were turned down from T Wildfish to T Pro, and yeah, you're not going to go and get three copies of Rosa. You're just going to go and have to deal with the one copy you find. If you find duplicates, mm -hmm. you just get a blank. Looks like Pancras took a reset there. I don't blame either runner for trying to do this fight. Um... With a start like this, obviously the big thing is getting that quack kid online and getting those level two spells active. So plague, not I, I'd call it a free fight, but it's a free fight under the right conditions. Uh, with this party composition, eh, a little bit rough. Maybe you want to come back later for that, or just not come back at all. Yeah, there's a number of agility setups where plague is pretty free. Or if you can just pull out enough damage, it's pretty free because he's not going to attack you. He's just going to do count. Mm -hmm. But when count hits zero, usually that's just something in the Owen spell your end. But both runners now in Antlion Cave, having seen that plague and Ikea resetting immediately, and Pancras taking a few hits and then resetting. So definitely catching up in time. Yeah, I don't, I don't fault the attempt for it. I mean, like, you know, getting those level two spells just makes such a huge difference in the early game. Oh, I so, agree. It's those... ju just a little bit of experience you need to, so. It's... Yeah, it's only about a thousand experience it takes for Pelham to learn one level two spell, and one level two spell mm -hmm. is pretty big. Hey, well, that's also free, but uh, free in the right way this time around. Yes, this water hag is going to go down after three hits, so... um it's also going to go and give you a whole bunch of time to enjoy the uh, cutscene from Anna going and encouraging Edward, who is uh, currently <laughs> not showing. But both runners are definitely not going to go and have much issue. Throwing, Pancras throwing Thor Rages, Ike here going and casting Fire 1, and mm -hmm. uh, Arg, the Water Hag, has given his speech full end. Let's see what we get rewarded with for this. It is, well, <laughs> okay. It's a gated character check. It is. One of the big things that matters on this flag set is, uh, unlike Zemo Zone 3, Fasoya is still around, and 
he is behind key item checks or key item Katie character checks. So not going to show up in Baronin or Mount Hobbs, but that package that counts as a spot. And I think our runners can be very interested to pick up pretty much anyone who can add damage to this team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, short of like an Edward, <laughs> I, I think you possibly sit through almost anything at whatever this uh, package cutscene gives us. So. You know, I'm not going to sit through for Porum either because we already have the Superior White Mage, but uh, eh, I true. agree there's very few people I'm not going to ta uh, take from that. <laughs> All right, seeing the CPU at Mist Cave. That's, uh, that's, that's interesting. For, uh, well, we're sitting through that one. Edge is uh, a little nerfed on these flag sets because we do have the C-Necky flag on, which uh, <laughs> characters don't start with their normal starting gear. They start with a random low-tier weapon mm -hmm. and nothing else. But the one key thing for Edge, and, you know, <laughs> because, you know, he starts with, in all reality, probably a Charm Claw or some, you know, other equivalent, um, does have access to Flame, and that can do a lot of work early. Yep, and he's incredibly fast. He's just going to go and get an absurd number of team uh, turns against uh, most enemies on the overworld. He starts around 20 agility, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, 23 at base level. Considering that these other characters have around 8 and 9 agility, that is a significant improvement. Yeah, you'll, you'll be seeing a lot of turns coming out of uh, Edge here. And as uh, Zeno in chat points out, uh, they do have a full moon in their inventory. So, that full... go ahead. That full moon is definitely one of Edge's better weapons because uh, it's about as strong as a longsword. It does back row Edge and it does extra damage against flying enemies, which Plague is a flying enemy should we have any intention of going back there and taking that experience. Mm -hmm. It's it's an interesting call. Um just because of you know the quack kid and the idea is you know to get to virus get to you know quake as soon as possible but yep. there's other ways to get that four thousand experience Agreed. so i yeah i'd be curious to see if either runner decides it's worth the time to go back up there or hey maybe we just take an encounter or two on ordeals and we make that up so yeah i can definitely agree oh, with that well <laughs> You know, I always love the Dark Elf for one reason. It's like, oh, it's a free fight, except there's two phases to it, and you have to sit through both of them, sadly. Yeah, you cannot one-shot the Dark Elf because <laughs> he is guaranteed to do his me chain script from the Dark Elf to the Dark Elf Dragon form. And uh, has just enough HP to not go down in a single power bot. We also saw a middle sword in Pancras's inventory, so mm -hmm. that full moon in Pancras, uh, full moon in middle, yeah, that's uh, some good damage for Pancras's edge. Oh yeah, uh, the middle sword was actually part of their starting kit. Not very often you go and think middle sword. Yes, I'll be happy to have that, but that's something <laughs> to our runners to go and be pleased with. The second weapon for Edge is actually somewhat important because Edge is one of the two characters who gets double scaling for attack off strength because that uh, two weapons, that means the bonus one attack power for four strength applies to each weapon. Mm -hmm. it, it's an interesting mentality to get into, especially in you know this flag set where everything sells for nothing. So you don't exactly have a reason to you know dump it out of your inventory, whereas you know like a prior flag set, like okay you're right why would i keep a middle sword let me just hawk the thing but now it's like okay well this takes time to get it out of my inventory i'll just hold on to it and hey here's an edge oh okay this is now useful so yeah and speaking of useful we saw that there was a cane in the kaipo bed so another good melee fighter that you uh, might eventually want to add to this team mm -hmm. absolutely And if we didn't find a Thunderclaw already, well, we found one on Edge as he came with it. Ooh, also having a Strength Ring and a Ninja. Those two items combined give eight Strength. That's uh, going to give Edge an extra attack multiplier, making him even better at doing damage. Mm -hmm. And on uh, Ikear's side, I see a Mute Knife. That is a very understated weapon for Edge. Uh, usually more known because of the fact of the uh, 
plus five uh, spellcasting stat on it for like the quack kid or anything like that. But uh, in Edge's hands, you come across a Mega Sister or an Asura, uh, very large numbers usually start coming out of Edge. Oh, yeah. That uh, Mute Knife, I mean, Edge, again, being able to use two weapons, he gets the attack power from both of them. That Mute Knife is usually vastly overshadowed by, overshadowed by a Runax, but Edge with a Masamune and a Mute Knife, you're doing some pretty hearty numbers to these uh, enemies. Mm-hmm. And I was I was gonna say on Pancras' side, I was wondering if he was gonna set up for this. Uh, elements in this spot, the way that fight works is it has two HP pools. You have one, you know, one stage of it and then the other, and it's split. So either you get it into Ruby phase, and you either have your Boreas in your inventory, or you queue up a nice two on the kid, and you skip the other half of the fight. It's clean as a whistle, and it gets you underground. I mean, he is definitely uh, the preferred way underground. There are two ways to get underground, which is the second third of the game, effectively. One is this magma key, which we will take to aggregate and drop down the well. The other is the hook, which requires us to pick up the hover raft, move it to Evelyn, and fight through two bosses. So pretty sure Pancras is happy to have that magma key this early. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's definitely the preferred way of underground access. I Don't get me wrong, I love the gated character, but... I mean, with what we're sitting on right now, this group that we have, I'm... I mean, if the hook just fell into my lap, yeah, I'd, I'd go check the character, but... Underground? Underground gives us quite a few more opportunities. Yes, we have that pan, which when we go and take it down to the Sylph Caves, we'll bonk Yang and get one key item check from the Sylphs, and then we can take it back to Pabul, where Ikir has just finished the defense, to get two more key items from, Sh from Yang's Wave Sheila. Mm-hmm. The defense giving a tower key is another nice find. Yeah, it's it's always nice, and this is definitely a change of pace from their last seed, where you know you're doing the overworld and you're getting items that kind of give you direction when you go underground. You know, on Pancras' side, you go underground, you have a pan, you do the bonk, you you kind of have that rotation in your head of what you're gonna do. I hear same thing with a tower key. You go do the bonk when you come back underground. It's two checks in the tower. So it, it, it's it's nice to be pointed in direction rather than, okay, I have nothing. What am I going to go do with myself right now? Yep, the one direction Pancras has missed is uh the Village of Mist, where Rosa's mother is waiting to be checked, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, and turning that in. He, he may end up routing that in on his uh, above ground back, you know, going back up to turn in the pan or something like that. But uh, hopefully not one of those, you know, that... Speaking for myself, no, I've never forgotten to check that. Oh, no. No, I no, have, it's definitely... I, I don't have a sticky note on my monitor that says, Hey, Rydia's mom, go check it. Yeah, no, I definitely haven't gone and lost a race because I've uh, <laughs> had an important item sitting on Demas since the 20-minute mark because it was the first boss of Ordeals, and I got very excited by the Magna Key from the last boss. No, no, never happened. Nope, not at all. We're amazing runners. We're great at this game. That's, yeah, that's, please, that's silly. Yeah, no, it's def definitely not one of those mistakes that haunts you forever. Yeah. But hey, we can always poke fun at ourselves about it, right? Exactly. It's one of those mistakes that uh, it might as well be called a competitive runner rite of passage. And oh my mm -hmm. goodness, we found Bacchus wines in Dwarf Castles, Sirens for Sale, and Tamra. This is definitely you've got a good starter kit if you just want to go and open up and get some get some levels yeah and a quality control inspector thank you as a man of the people checking out the job door for today so oh and yeah i i saw pancras hovering over that cat claw pancras does like his yang and his oh oh my wow goodness. wow the shops in tamra today <laughs> I'm sure Pancras is only mildly annoyed at the fact that they started with 30,000 gil, and, um... Uh, yeah! Yeah, it would be uh, nice to be able to afford any of those items. That's one of those, how fast can I get to the moon, how fast can I kill gold dragons, and how fast can I come back and spend all that glorious money in Tamra, because, oof. There oh, are that's... some things there I would love to have. I mean, I look at that shop, it's like, yeah, I want to spend 60,000 in cat claws, 60,000 in a heroin robe, and have the 25,000 first ring uh sure going to give me some charm arrows that samurai bow looks so nice too i'd take that 
that's like what only two hundred thousand gold. Yeah, I yeah. can totally get that easily. Sure, it's a uh, it's a walk in the park, and and you see why that flag was turned on SL zero. It it does it it does you know make choices a little more difficult for you. It's like, do I buy that curse ring? Do I save the money and buy some sirens with it? Do I buy a twenty stack of mute arrows and a sorker uh, sork robe? I mean. Do I save my money for another shop because coffins are still out there? Yeah. Hourglasses are still out there. The rat tail is in Mist Village on uh, Rose's mother, so that's a point for Ike here to have. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's so many good items in the shops in these flags. As standard, it's no as wild, but really, you, uh, you do not mind some of the things you can buy on these shops. And when you can't afford them, it hurts all the more. Mm hmm. And uh, I think that's kind of a trade-off in this flag set where you see a little bit more looting than normal just because it's like, hey, all these great things in shops and, and I can't afford any of them. Well, maybe I can just accidentally find one somewhere. Yep, you're uh, the curse of I bought a dwarf act and then I found a dwarf axe in the next chest. Hurts a lot more when you don't have a, you can't go and convert that second dwarf axe into 7,500 gold, and instead are just stuck staring at two dwarf axes in the air. <laughs> right. Uh, but I did see, I did see music. I saw Pancras and a freebie in music. Wow, that's, uh, that is objective number two. That is going to go and let us complete Cave Magnus so we can go and turn this in and the Fire Claw is definitely a nice end to pick up as it is fire elemental damage for both Young and Edge. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know if we're going to be using that as we have defeated Elements and Mylon Z is the only mother or excuse me, only other enemy that could really afford to use that. But we do see a free fight in Fame Marks in the form of one of the Baron Guards or the Kaipo Guards. Yeah. And Pancras leaving. Pancras, I don't think, has any tools for going and getting, you know, dealing with that uh, free yeah. boss. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if coffins were ever purchased slash found, so... Hmm. And is choosing to go and use a siren in uh, this peninsula to summon a yellow dragon egg. Do, do you agree with it? I, I have my thought on this immediately, but I'll, 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 I'll let you field this one. What do you think? Well, an important number that a lot of runners know off the top of their head is uh, 36,000 experience on Palum gets Quake. This egg gives 34,000, so Quake being the spell it is, I have a hard time disagreeing with going and getting that on Palum immediately. That Quake spell is going to start off at about 2,000 damage at least. That's going to rip through the overworld and really let you do a lot of underground checks as well. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but on the uh, top side of that party, Rosa as well, and uh, picking up that Berserk spell from this fight is going to make a huge difference considering, you know, staring at a Yang and an Edge in your party. Uh, that's going to boost their damage by quite a bit as well, so. And just the other advantage of Berserk in addition to just 50% extra damage when you attack, you don't have to go and enter the commands, which saves you time. And if you're uh, not getting those actions in inputted immediately on Battle Speed 1, you're very likely to be losing turns, but Berserker mm -hmm. will not lose any turns. Mm hmm And I just saw something on Ikea's side. That looked like the Holy Sword. <laughs> <laughs> Not the key Holy Sword, but uh, the aforementioned Exhale that got uh, added into the key item pool instead of being behind the uh, Adam and Legend Sword Forge. Or it could just be a spare one, as uh, we do sometimes get Tier 7 loot from that... Uh, key item pool and Xcale is a tier 7 item that is the highest tier of loot we can get mm -hmm. I, I was more thinking being used as a dart so, so, I mean we are you know C distinct 10 so there are two characters that aren't going to be in the game uh, Cecil could be one of them in which case it's a very handy dart to have <laughs> Yeah, yeah, 150 attack power times that level is a lot, and uh, yeah. that's an Earth Crystal from that pan turn in. Yeah, and a hook. <laughs> yeah, that's uh. <laughs> so about that, uh, hey, it's always nice on the overworld when you get items that kind of give you direction. Um, I didn't mean all the directions all at once. 
I mean, you can just keep stacking flags. I'm <laughs> you know, just keep stacking signs on that flagpole. Like, go here, go here, go here, go here, go here. Oh, you did one check here. Let me give you two more. Just go here and here and here. I was going to say, yeah, What what's next? Darkness coming out of Earth? And then it's like, all right, here we go. Pick, choose, go. No, clearly should come out of Rat Gel because we don't want to wait so long for that. Oh, uh... that's a valid point. Yeah. Speaking of valid points, Ike here is going straight to the hook route that, uh, yeah, yeah, I believe you mentioned you're quite tempted to go and run through this to check the character here at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, gated character, you know, obviously edge. You know, dupes are still in there. It could be another edge, but you're really banking on it being a foo, a Cecil. I've seen a Cecil. hourglasses for sale in the shop as well. Not to go whenever at the point of dreaming for Cecil, but uh, those hourglasses that I hear sees with the meager 2,800 gold remaining from their mm -hmm. pitiful 30,000 starter kit is that had to hurt a bit. Yeah, especially when you're staring at it as a return on investment. Like, if I had one, all I need is one, plus my one siren, and it's 69,000 gold on the moon just waiting for me if I had one. <laughs> yes. That is not a foo. That is not uh, a Cecil. <laughs> that's a very secure late game anchor option if you're inclined to walk back here. Mm, absolutely. But uh, yes, that is Rydia facing off the karate fight. So uh, not the on that we have to, that we've already recruited, but the boss fight who will go down to one hit from Paladin and Cecil, or you actually need to fight fairly. But we don't need to go through the hook route, so it's just the boss we don't need to deal with today. Yeah. Let's see what this rat tail gives us. <clears throat> I, you know, I, I, it's no, it's it's still not enough for me to take Radia. I agree. Now, Quake is a thirty MP spell that Palom on Pancras's side already has, and Radia's going to need some experience if you want her to go and be able to cast that. So, mm -hmm. a little tricky, but I do see Ike here heading to Toria and. uh I wonder if we're going to go and be seeing some more boxes opened. Mm, I mean, we, we, we didn't see Evelyn and, you know, kind of not much on the watery pass. And I believe that answers our question. I think we're going to be raiding a certain treasury. Oh, wait, is there music for that? I seem to remember there is. I think there is something for that. that treasury! We are going and getting Guy Hat, Rune Rings. You know, the Rune Ring I'm very happy to see. Guy Hat's also pretty good because that is the best stat hat for Palom for increasing, improving his black magic. Mm -hmm. Also the uh, dreaded inventory boss, but, you know, that's that's normal. 18 chests and, you know, you, you kind of want to take everything in here. Yeah. Bandana is a good thing to find. Strength Rings are always nice. Headband is pretty good as well. The Drain Spear is actually a nice hit because awful weapon for Kane to use. Fantastic weapon for Edge to throw. I I, I feel like that's such a like that that makes no sense to me. You, you have a I don't even know the exact number on the attack power on it, but let's say a hundred attack power weapon that has like forty percent accuracy. Oh, so I worse. feel like when I look at this spear, it's like some like wooden like bent wavy like if you try to throw this thing. It would like waver in the air All right, so it doesn't hit thought. for a lot but when you throw it it does obscene amounts of damage because it just doesn't care i mean it does take off minus 10 stats as well and it has <laughs> your 40 percent is oddly generous because it's actually a 12 percent accuracy there you weapon. go it's even worse than that <laughs> yeah my theory is every time you're hold, you, like if you're holding it and trying to use it and stab something with it it's actually trying to drain your blood so you're just anemic the entire time Oh, and she's just like, all right, let me pick this up and whip it through. And, oh, it doesn't get to suck out any of my life force. And is instead, you know, stuck my enemy doing the same to them. All right, that's, that's fair. I'll, I, I, I can work with that. Speaking of working with that, we see uh, Pancras already in the second fight of ordeals going and dealing with Dr. Lugay. Mm -hmm. Slightly annoying to a two-part fight where the first part is... Uh, Belnob and Dr. Lugay trying to go and fight you when Belnob not entirely knowing who the enemy is. 
sometimes sometimes the robots they need direction you, know, you just gotta point them and give them a little push sometimes they're more artificial than intelligence that's also true but uh that thunderclaw putting in work there yes thunderclaw not only uh lightning elemental damage it does bonus damage to machine type enemies and dr luge in the second form is in fact a machine type enemy mm -hmm. fun fact bell lab in the first fight is a machine type enemy if you kill Bellnob but don't kill the doctor fast enough, you will turn into Bellnob Z with the doctor piloting the uh, remains of Bellnob. That enemy is not a machine. That sounds like quality coding to me. Quality consistency. <laughs> <laughs> what we expect from Final Fantasy IV as these oh. dealers in the, I believe, Mega Sister spot. Yes. That's, uh, they're undead. Also not weak to holy, still weak to fire. Can I go back to that quality coding thing again? Because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe they're resurrected holy dragons who have been forced to serve uh, the darker Don't, power. Do not get me started on dragons and what this game <laughs> considers to be a dragon, because I have words about that, okay? <laughs> Look, just because there happens to be the dragon god who's not a dragon, the myth dragon who's not a dragon, and the D machine that is a dragon, doesn't mean the game's inconsistent about what dragons are. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I feel like when they coded the game, they didn't really expect us to, you know, demist it elements or anything like that. So I, I'm not going to hold it too much against them, but come on, really? Maybe they expected that, you know, you have this is the first boss of the game. It's going to be weak to dark, so the main character will do some extra damage to it. Why do we care about anything else? Yeah, that's uh, fair. Oh, well... Speaking of dark. Oh. And speaking Two. of. And speaking of dark again. Aha. Uh -huh. That is some quality information and a quality character yeah. when we have a quality holy sword for that, Cecil. And that answers the very interesting question on where objective number four is sitting, too. Yeah, we, uh. Objective four is sitting in the. Well. Second boss fight of Dwarf Castle, and there's not a second character in Zaha as it's another duplicate Rosa. <laughs> I was going to say, that was, that was a little bit confusing to watch that one there. Like, uh, should we save her? Should we just let the... Uh, no, no, of course we save her. Rosa's a self-saving self -saving heroine. Goes, gets herself out of trouble, <laughs> goes and congratulates, gives herself a high five. And then we find Edge's parents, who have the great tragic story of being experimented on by Dr. Belna or Dr. Luge. This 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 is progressing. Yeah, this is actually making storyline sense, except for the part where Edge is about to murder his parents, but that's okay. I mean they kinda go and do it to themselves after they regain conscience because they really don't enjoy what Dr. Luge did to them, so that's that's true. But I hear with that Dark Knight Cecil is uh probably gonna be going straight to that ordeals where that very important adamant rock was. Mm-hmm. So oh, we have that the illustrious HP ran out kill? Nice. Ah uh, yes, good old virus casting sap or applying sap, which slowly drains two HP per ATV tick, and uh if it goes and finishes off an enemy, you get the bonus message for it finished doing the job for you. Yeah, I, I I won't tell stories about. Uh, by the way, don't use the virus when you're trying to shorten the fight at uh, Cave Magnus. Oh, um, I've I, I've had that go sideways. It's it's not pretty. What's your record? Mine's three, four. Oh, nice. I I I saw it and I saw the stagger of seven five three one. I'm like, I know where this is going. Oh, and a that minute is later, I got to see all four of them go HP <laughs> ran out. Speaking of running out, Rosa has now learned to exit, and we get a class hat from Zot. Normally, I'd call that a whiff, but uh, Cecil and knowledge of where Dark Imps is, that's still pretty good. Mm hmm. Very much so. I mean, I, I'll never turn down a glass hat just because Cecil, while we all say Cecil goes burr, uh, Cecil also has a very nifty little cover ability that you can use to do some very interesting things that you have no business doing at the level you're at. And a glass hat definitely helps in that case yeah it turns out when you can guarantee all of your characters are going to like you know your party you have all these squishy little mages and then you have that guy in heavy armor if you can guarantee the guy in heavy armor is always one getting hit it's actually pretty helpful 
Very much so. Speaking of being helpful, Pancras is uh, looking to go and route in their trips to Toria as they are going to music first and might be going to that Earth Crystal afterwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's good routing sense. Mm -hmm. So it just is. because Earth Crystal dumps you in Baron, so you know, saves, saves you a little bit of flight time. Yep. You, you know, park their, park their ones, hit two checks, might feel pretty good, and that the Swin Harp is required. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I care is beelining ordeals as, huh, do I want to get a character who can go and use a 150 attack power weapon? This right away? That's, that's silly. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, you got Edge, you got Yang. Yang's eventually getting yeah. gift. Like, yeah. get Yang to 75, his fist gained two attack power per level. He'll yeah. be 150 damage in no time. It only takes about 3 million experience to get there. Yeah, this is like a whopping three fights that you have to go through. Just, just a upgrade him to level one like why am i gonna sit through that that's yeah, silly <laughs> like you lose all these levels on cecil is it really an upgrade he starts again at level 10 and then he comes back at level one how good could he possibly be uh, I've, I've heard rumors that a crystal sword cecil at level one hits like over 2k so yeah yeah he can be that good he's uh <laughs> he is in fact a bit silly yeah yeah, broken, I believe, is the uh, appropriate term. I mean, he keeps your party for breaking, so, you know, maybe he's just <laughs> simply not a not-so-broken shell. Uh... But uh, we do see the Dark Elf, uh, Pancras goes and knocks down Yang with a virus from Palum, and then Dark Elf says, oh, we're taking down the team, let me help you, and finishes off the remaining standing character, and we are about to get music. Two, what are we up to, Baka? 244, 245 on music? I actually don't know the number of different songs, to be entirely honest. I haven't heard them all. I'm curious. I want to hear this one. And that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Fire Stage 1 theme. That, uh, certainly a very nice rendition of that. Very exciting and energetic. Yeah, very punchy. Oh, wow. Well. Oh. Well. Yeah, punchy. <laughs> uh, the world and the moon is your oyster? I, I got nothing. Everything is open to these characters. 
to yeah. these runners at this point. Once they do this uh, uh twin heart this required twin harp check from the Fame March freebie chest from the Magma Key and Baron Inn with the which had the 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 required yeah man, this seed is really leading you by the nose to the moon, isn't it? It really is. And the the, the rare sight on Pancras's side. Uh, how many times in, in your history have you ever had a walk out of Magnus? More times than I want to admit, but uh, <laughs> it hurts every time. <laughs> it's one of those, unfortunately, it's like, okay, well, maybe I should have done Earth first just so Rosa could have learned to exit. <laughs> yeah. It, but nah, why would I do that? Pancras probably a little annoyed <laughs> that he used the one exit item he had in uh, Fey March, which had the rather convenient exit. We'll see if... Uh, I don't believe Pancras is going to open the treasury. Or... And it looks like it, they are going to go and take another shot as the uh, Ike here did. Yeah. I'm 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 curious what Pancras is uh I, I feel like he's probably trying to spike something here. I just don't know what. Well he doesn't know about the Cecil in the tower, so he might be looking for ninja swords for edge. That could be good. I would say cat claws. Yeah. Obviously not having to buy those would be fantastic. Yep, an extra strength ring for these uh, melee characters is good. Samurai arrows are also mm -hmm. solid. You never know when an apple push you above a threshold to, you know, make sure you don't get whacked by a big bang. You know, that's okay. Yeah, that can go and save you a bit of, you know, really want to make sure your white mage is safe and secure. Rosa does have good HP growth, but uh, you never want to wait too long on grinding. And each mm. level as you get higher and higher takes longer and longer. You yep. might want to go and just pop an apple instead of a siren. Yeah, hey, well, speaking of sirens, though, nice uh, segue there, sir. Uh, I hear popping the siren. Uh, Cecil, fantastic. Cecil gets even better with levels. So, you know, yeah, pop popping, getting just a little quick infusion there. Yeah, also, turns out when you get a ahead. character with a one strength for level. Levels are really nice. Yeah. Also, uh, if this is a lesson to everyone, ne never do sirens right on top of the airship unless you're very comfortable in what you do, because uh, weird things can happen if you like pressing A way too fast. Just saying. Yep. It can happen. A, t a thing I've picked up doing is that in order to get through this uh, end of battle text, you do not have to push the A button. You can push any button. Mm -hmm. But push the menu button. There you go. There you go. I mean, sh show of hands to most people, and we've probably all done this. Either A, as I here showed us, accidentally take off in the airship, or B, use a siren and somehow hit A on the exact frame you come out launch the airship go up and get the sound that no idiot you can't use a siren on the airship oh i have not managed that but that is uh yeah it's it's a great sound <laughs> that, yeah i mean that sounds about as close as you need to do to uh get an empty underflow glitch going yeah yeah it's been a while since i've seen that glitch I, I feel like it went on vacation with Fu and decided it was just going to stay. It is, uh, in competitive free enterprise, we do like to keep, you know, if you have MP Underflow on, it's easier to take Fu and Tella because that limited MP pool becomes a bit less of a restriction when you can go and do it infinitely. But there was a flag set some time ago in the World Series of Free Enterprise Tournament where the Giant Percent, which had a number of different interesting flags, did have a lot of glitches on, like the mm. duplication glitch and the MP underflow. Mm. The cost was there were no J items and there were no shops. Well, shops sold <laughs> nothing but cabins. But you only I had to beat I, the giant. I like where this is going. Continue. <laughs> oh, uh, if you ever want a flag set to explain to you why Tella is amazing, that will do it. Uh, you have no J items, you have no shops that can sell anything. Hella, you do ordeals. He's got every spell that really matters for those J items. Stop. Blink. Weak. Don. Oh. He, he is a heck of a utility mage, isn't he? I, he is. Yeah, uh, I agree. But we do see Ike here taking the new path up the tower while Pancras, having finished that uh, Twin Harp check for darkness, is going to go and do this uh, Zot check that Ikir has finished. And while we are seeing a little bit of uh, common ground, 
would like to shout out our restreamer Neo Bari and our tracker Xeno Catch for uh, helping us put on a show today, and Martin for joining me on commentary. Wait, wait, helping? I, I feel like they're the ones doing all the work, though. We're we're just kind of here entertaining the people and ourselves. Well, I'm glad you're aiming to entertain other people because I, I I've been a little selfish at feels. <laughs> Ah, it's a great time. Wow. Well. We know uh, the towers are free today, and the other freebie fight in Fate March is identified as the Baron Guards, because this is the Kaipo Guards. So, you, you know, there's two ways we can look at this. Hooray, all the free bosses are kind of out of the pool, which means all the rude ones are going to be on the moon. I'm okay <laughs> with this. On the flip side, are we going to need to check the moon at all? That's my concern right now. <laughs> we're we're uh... we're not not to root against the racers. We love the racers, but we're also team free enterprise. So we want the pink tail or, you know, the legend sword to be on the moon behind something not quite so pleasant. Yeah, we we, we do want to see more of the game. It's a fun game. We'd like to see it. Yeah. Uh we also Um what? wait, there's one exception of that though. Oh don't root for ties yeah it's I, true, I, I true. hear the admins do not like that when you do that it, it's uh you know if it's a tie then we got to do this all over again and that might take <laughs> a bit and hey look there's something that's not gonna be on the moon that's the legend sword uh oh well so that's uh yeah we we that, that's we no know exactly what to do yeah that's go mo oh Hancraz just got a bit of information as well. Hancraz knows the alt the there are two fights that are indicated by a blue rope. The first is Water Hag, which we fought in Antlion Cave. Punch it three times, he goes down, and that's you know that's the end of the fight. What's the other blue rope, Martin? Ah, uh, five fights of why am I sitting through this wasting my time? <laughs> but uh, it looks like Hancraz kept good count of their money and uh yeah they've uh they bought that curse during their eye in that shop that had another mm -hmm. you know two hundred thousand of goods i wanted to buy and might be going straight back to that dwarf castle i i mean we we saw what the second fight is so unless you accidentally trip on we've seen the legend store unless you accidentally trip on the pink tail by not doing this but it's right in front of you you go do this <laughs> yep that is uh Ike here could be in great shape. This is the pink tail. Just the sand ruby, but uh, Ike here, Ike here is probably well, is in uh, crystal mode, but does not know where the darkness is. But uh, mm -hmm. all right, excuse me, Ike here is not in crystal mode yet because he still has to go down to Fay March and check that free chest. Yeah. Once he does that, though, and gets his twin harp. And well, the twin harp leading to darkness. So, yeah, we're 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 pretty much there. So this is this is going to get very fast, very quickly here. Our runners are going to go and be, uh, I imagine, feeling a bit of pressure in just a few minutes. Oh, Night Dew brings up a very valid point. Uh, why, why is agility important on this? So. Uh, I'll let you know what, I'll let you feel this one. Uh, fair point. As uh, we can see, that Palum is getting uh, some spells off rather quickly. Uh, the very, very short version of this is agility in Final Fantasy IV is based off of Cecil. And uh, whatever his agility is, everyone else is scaled around it. But to make the game not completely crush you, there's an upper limit to how much faster you can be than anything. And that's five times faster than your anchor. As I said, Cecil's the anchor in the vanilla game, but in Free Enterprise, it's your middle slot character. If you put on a curse string, that puts minus 15 to all stats. And if your agility is one, you only have to have three agility to be the maximum speed. It's a very good explanation. And it's a very good thing that Tankrez knows it because uh, these enemies aren't even getting hits off because he is queuing up that quake immediately, run buffering to go and prevent the enemies from getting actions entered before him. And then uh, just that quake is charging up while the enemies are trying to cue their attack. It's a little unfair. 
I mean, the, these are these are strats that you know you learn the the and while we're talking about strats, let's let's talk about what Pancras is doing in his uh few frames in between everything too. You know, we we as broadcasters and racers, you know, we obviously you get this far in the tournament you're doing really well you you have a great handle of the game and the things that you normally do where where do you start saving time it's all the little micro things that you start picking up and you see that on pancras side a lot where he'll go in and he'll go into menus and rearrange inventory put items up top etc we, we we've all and i'll i'll pose this question to you baka how, how much time do you think you bleed every seed where you're just you know, maybe searching through inventory or having to go pick and choose what items you sell, trash can, et cetera, so forth. What if you could cut that down? Well, I, I what, hold on. I've been advised my lawyer to plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you see on Bankrest's side is just, just those little optimizations. How, how many races have we seen, you know, determined by less than a minute in this tournament already? Goodness, we have seen so many especially yeah. in the last few weeks and uh as swiss went on they got more and more and as i see with these brackets i don't think we're gonna we're gonna get fewer of them we're probably gonna get more mm -hmm. so yeah seconds count here so just keep, keep that in mind if it you know gets to a point where you're wondering hey you know what what is pancras doing saving time that's that's exactly what he's doing yeah that uh I mean, all of our runners can go and operate very well in that strategic layer, as you mentioned. So that menuing is very helpful. Just there's been a number of times where yeah, I've gone to my inventory. It's like, do I have anything to help? No. Okay. Well, that's not going to go and help. And mm -hmm. is putting all of it up top, and he can just scan it quickly. Like, nope. Or he's just very familiar with it because he's constantly fiddling with it. It is a very helpful thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you of helpful things to do. Pancras is checking this tower, which is going to give him a legend sword, while Ikir is going to the Twin Harp to get a Darkness Crystal. Both these runners are going to be put much closer to dark to uh, their go mode almost immediately. Yeah. Let's take a quick count. Uh, we have Pancras at. Ankras is already at 10 key items, so he is going to go and be getting double experience from all fights going forward. And Ike here is two key items ahead of Pan or one key item ahead of Pancras on that count. Mm -hmm. And speaking of things that count, encores! More music for everyone. getting through that uh, mob bomb fight a bit faster than Pancras, but Pancras has the Legend Sword and is not even checking the tower key. Justin knows Pancras is in full go mode. 
does not want to wait for anything. Ikir still needs to do Dwarf Castle to get the Dark Imps boss fight and get their crystal. So with uh, Pancras in go mode, what uh, what grind do you think Pancras is going to do? Or do you think I, Pancras is going to skip a grind? You know, so we, we talked about money earlier. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously going through the seed, killing bosses and everything, you do get, you know, a small inkling of money from it. Um, with Sirens available underground and the fact that you're at 10 key items, I would probably say you don't have hourglasses and you're probably not going to spend the money on them. I would say you probably burn a few eggs, probably get Cecil and Rosa to like cure four status and you're gone because you can finish this game with a power couple just fine. So, and seeing 29,000 there on uh, Pancras' side, that's seven sirens. That's going to be at 68,000 a shot. That's going to be enough to pretty much get your party where they need to be to finish this game. I, yeah, I agree. Eggs are definitely incredibly, effi incredibly efficient. Words hard. I am curious as to what your thoughts are of the three warlock fight on the moon as we don't have the pass we will have to walk the moon anyways Th those aren't bad i do i like life glitch in them i love the fact that uh mute bells uh or even adjusting your party order to uh example what we saw with uh the uh gauntlet in dwarf castle where instead of you know the kid casting quack up top put rosa up top and have her cast mute on them as well uh that's also a very quick one but being able to just one-shot eggs, put Cecil on the top slot, and just let him swing once, and the egg goes flat. I, I feel like speed-wise, this probably comes out a little bit ahead. I am not going to disagree with that, because as much as I like the Warlocks, they are a bit slow. You cannot go and just completely decimate them the way you can with uh, this XL Cecil on these <laughs> not even 2,000 HP eggs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're seeing back row Cecil and, yep, top slot and eggs are about to have a very bad day. Although, I have a question for you, Baka. Oh? In, in all your time playing Young know, Free Enterprise and everything, have you ever quite figured out how you get surprised by an egg? I mean, you pop a siren, you look for it in front of you, then you turn around and, oh my goodness, it's in front. Of, it's right there. How? Where'd it come from? <laughs> and while you're waiting for that, it's just like, the egg is sitting there staring at you. <laughs> I mean, do you think the siren is, you know, just too loud? Are you distracted by it? Is there maybe a small hill behind you that the egg just kind of rolls down, like bumps into your ankle, and you're like, oh, hey, hi. Well, I think the real key to going and being surprised by an egg is that you need to have a flat piece of featureless terrain. Like, you know, this peninsula doesn't seem like it's hilly or anything. It's very flat. So you just sit here, you pop a siren, and then an egg showed up. Where the, yeah. where'd it come from even? I, I, I... I wish I had a great answer for it. Someday, maybe we will get that explained to us, but. But for now, yeah, I mean, I'd be surprised by an egg that showed up if I just played a loud sound. Yeah, right? I, I can't say I, I'm willing to try that, though, in real life and see. <laughs> I'd be worried if an egg showed up. Yeah, I'd be worried about other things showing up. Maybe <laughs> um, certain people with flashy lights on their car. That is true. <laughs> But uh, Ikir has not forgotten that uh, the Dark Imps are in Dwarf Castle and is prepared to go and get through this gauntlet, though, using Edge to cast Flame and mopping up any survivors with Cecil. Give me about mm -hmm. the same speed, but not quite as efficient as that one cast Quake from Palom, because these yeah. enemies are getting some attack. Yeah. And I don't know on Ikir's side, did Ikir uh, ever check the shop in Tamra and see that Cursed Ring? That's That may be a big difference. Yeah, I don't think Ikir did hit that shop, which uh, that is a very big piece of information that mm -hmm. these uh, those cursing, these small things can go and make big changes. Those That cursing is a big ticket item that in a huge way, just making it easier to go and have a very solid anchor. Ikir mm -hmm. might actually be tempted to take the Sid who shows up, who starts at 9 agility. Yeah, and with the Dwarf Axe, you can pretty much uh, send him right down to almost nothing, so... If you had a Dwarf Axe, of course, but... Yeah, I think Ikir might 
not have one of those because I don't think of all the chests we've seen, we've seen a dwarf act. But uh, immediately gets rid of Sid though. Maybe Ike here is considering now. This I have a different anchor in mind. I'm going to go back to that. Uh, oh, the Bradia. Yeah. Do your grind first, and then oh hey, I can pick up this four agility child, bring her mm -hmm. to the moon, and excuse me, she's an adult now after doing Dwarf Castle. But this it, level it, one. It's one of those things that you know. Obviously, you know. I guess you know. I'll, we'll always come back to both of us being racers, but you know, they're the. People are very divided on the idea of a cursed ring. Like, you know, some people see it as a crutch. And, you know, hey, if it just has, so happens to appear, so be it. But you, you learn to manipulate parties and things like that. You know, if you don't have one, you know, having that pocket Rydia where, hey, here's your four agility anchor. Or, you know, on Ikear's side, it's like, okay, I have this party. How, how do I manipulate or get the best agility flavor out of my party? possible and just work with it and that's you know obviously you get this far in the tournament you are going to see those um and not to delve too much into you know other flag sets but like the sea hero flag set that we're seeing now where you know you have a hero and it's you, the agility is just based off that character you you learn to operate all these different ways but i mean i won't turn down a cursed ring if i ever find one but exactly. you learn to work without it. Yeah, no, that, uh, one of the things that is very common in free enterprise because it is, this anchoring situation is very powerful because it gives two distinct advantages. As I mentioned, there is a cap as to how much faster things can be than your anchor. And Zeromus is a lot faster than you in general. So you're not going to want to go and make, like, give it Zeromus a turn advantage because he's really mean. And the other advantage is you can go and have a very consistent turn order. You can know exactly who is going when in your party, and you can plan your fights out as you're walking to them. And that is something I think gets overlooked a bit sometimes by people who are still coming up as just when I go into a fight, I know exactly how I'm going to start it. Even if it's, I don't know what boss I'm fighting, but I'm going to go and cast Berserk with Rosa to get Cecil Zerk, and I'm going to go and have my party orders that... Cecil's not going to go be trying to take an action while the Zerk's hitting him. I'm going to go and have Yon here doing something else. All these, you know, small things, as we said, small optimizations, and you'll see them across our runners throughout the tournament. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Looked like there was an Eddie up there on the moon. There was? It, it seemed to go and disappear very quickly. I, you know, I think he got fed to the hairdryer, so I, I can neither confirm nor deny that, but I hear that may have occurred, so... Maybe they're nice. Maybe they're going look. There's a whale here. Go and, you know, watch it, and we'll let you go and ride back with us back to the Earth. Oh, and Pankras is, in fact, not done with Sirens. and instead doing bo what both of us suggested. Yeah, taking... inter interesting. Uh, I may have an idea why. I'll, I'll speculate on it. Uh, I see that kid at 1,600 HP. It, in my travels, I'm pretty sure that kid hits Nuke at, like, 17 and change. So this might be enough to push Palom into new territory. That, that's some very nice territory to be in. Mm. And the edge with a mute knife is, at these levels, very reliably killing these warlocks that have about uh, 4,400 HP, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right right in that threshold. So, But yeah, mute knife does very bad things to mages. So. 173,000 damage. Oh, damage, uh, he shorted it by one level. <laughs> Of course he we did. saw Medio, we didn't see the other half of it. <laughs> but uh, Pancras is... Alright, Pancras is walking a bit and then she said, no, okay, we'll, we'll finish this off. <laughs> oh, there's nothing worse than that, right? Going going into a fight and your 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 quack hits level 51. And it's like, oh, but 52 gets me a big spell that does amazing things. Like, oh. I, I want the big spell. Yeah, right? I want right? the big number. I don't want to have to turn on encounters and pick a random fight just to get there. Yes. Got a very nice job of lightly cleaning up their inventory as they're going while Ike here is finished with their sirens on Earth or heading up to the moon. Pancras was grinding a bit longer than Ike here, but I think Ike here was at 10 key items longer than Pancras. We'll see if uh, 
how these fights differ. Mm -hmm. But uh, Pancras, no more sirens, but uh, Nukon Palm is a pretty good stopping point. If you go for anything beyond that, you are... Uh, I'd accuse you of making some vanity plays at that point, because that's a lot of experience to have on your Zerker team. Right. So if you've invested this with uh, energy in getting your Palum up to Nuke, are you going to keep the Curse Ring on him? You know, I, I look at the party, and... I mean, the way this is probably going to go, I, I feel like Hybrid's going to be on the table. I, I, I don't feel like this is going to be... I mean, you could try Sniper Reflect Strat here, but I, I think it's going to be Hybrid. So where is most of your damage coming from? It's Cal probably Cecil. gonna. I, I was gonna say it's probably gonna be three berserkers. Yeah, it'll probably be Cecil Edge Yang, um, Rosa on Cure Four Duty, which leaves the kid unfortunately kind of out in the dark. So probably Cursed Ring, supplemental nukes that probably aren't gonna do a ton of damage, but eh, they help. Yeah, so. I think Palin does have bluff. He can go and temporarily increase his uh, wisdom by sixteen per bluff, so he mm -hmm. can do that. But it is also taking turns and. Uh, not doing damage, which hour three into this very jetty seed where you didn't have to go through a lot of hard fights to get anything, might yeah. be feeling a bit behind or just feeling the pressure. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm beginning to see Z flags here in chat. Chat, are you feeling sleepy? This doesn't uh, seem like the time to be sleepy. I was going to say, it's only 5.20 in the afternoon. Good lord, really? It's only 8.20 I mean, even on the other coast. I was like, I'm good with a nap. I mean, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I believe the, the 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 question mark is the important part of that Z flag. So what is the question mark? I do believe that uh, once upon a time in the early parts of this randomizer, we had a flag that was the Z flag, where you could turn it on, and instead of getting the normal boring Zeroma sprite, you could get by one of many. And at these days, it's no longer turned on it's only you have to turn it you have to turn off at this point but we will be getting one of 527 different Zeroma sprites to fight as uh he's a little uh it's a little plain to fight the same one too many times so with your z-flags out in chat let's ask whose butt are we kicking tonight i'm i'm only scared of one of them is it the moon no it wields a newspaper it's oh. legitimately terrifying, and I don't think I want to kick it. <laughs> I'm only afraid of that one's ire. They're usually pretty nice. Yeah. The moon, however, haunts my dreams, and I did prevent them from sleeping, as we're going to see some nukes, and, uh... <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> the world one, I do believe we're not seeing the first Goomba, who probably has the highest kill count of any enemy in any game, so mm -hmm. rightfully terrifying. And, and and as small children playing this game, it's how many times do we blame our A button? It's like I swore I jumped over it. It's like no, nah, I just ran face first right into it. We've 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 been there. I absolutely jumped every time. <laughs> My lawyer is advising me not to continue answering that question. <laughs> but we're seeing uh, Edge go and chuck things. Rosa is just using the crystal to go and get a counter nuke. Mm -hmm. Why are we trying to get a counter nuke off Zeromus? Uh, Zeromus is, is, is a fun little one. Uh, the first time around, any uh, direct like spell-based damage to him uh, will trigger a counter nuke, which actually lowers the power of his next uh, thing, which is going to be a Big Bang. So you can actually control the damage that comes out of a Big Bang. The first round is free. It can happen any time. After that, there's a there's a window that you have to hit uh, between where you see the vibrate and where it fires. If you miss it, you'll know you missed it. But if you hit it, the max damage is 1,200. And uh, that is a very helpful thing when uh, you don't really want to go and take full damage. Rosa only has oh okay. Rosa only only has 2,600 HP, but I think she's going to be okay. Yeah, I think they call that first world problems. Yes, Only it's... Only uh, 2,600 HP. Oh, no. Whatever will we do? Agreed. It's uh, more common to take uh, these fights at 
2,000 HP on Rosa, but I do want to call special attention to you. Uh, what looks like Cecil Swing for 4,000 damage with an axe. That is taking advantage of the Berserk glitch, where if you go queue up Berserk and switch someone's weapon but don't input an action, you want to keep the stats of the original weapon but it'll look like the one you have equipped. Normally this is used with the Avenger, where you go and hot swap off your nice crystal sword or x scale on your Cecil and put on the Avenger. Comes mm. up, automatically berserks your character and you swing with an Avenger first. Thousands more damage than it should. But, is, uh, being but a why do we do it here. here? But why do we do it here? One very exact reason. Because the, the x scale is a dart. Everybody knows this. So yes, you throw it at things. That is, that's a very good optimization I have overlooked. That is, uh... <laughs> That is some very heads up play on Pancras, and that's a very dead subs aromas at wow. one minute, one hour, seven minutes, five seconds. That's a dead aromas, all right. Woo! GG to Pancras. Boy, that was, uh, world one. Boy, don't we all wish we could finish world one that fast? <laughs> I'm afraid if I do and finish that fast, how I have to go and beat the rest of the game at that point. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, speed runs. Of speed runs, I do believe we have a very speedy person joining us right now. GG's Pancras for that absolute decimation of that C. Hey, GG's, thank you very much. GG, sir, well played. That was a that was a clinic. Easy to put on a clinic when it's kind of straightforward like that. <laughs> I I mean, considering your last seed, I feel like anything would have been a clinic after that last one. <laughs> Anything would have been probably faster. <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, suggesting that I having to clear everything is somehow faster than only have to clearing some parts of the earth? You know, I'm not an expert, but I think that might be the case. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure the math does check out on that. <laughs> so, uh, thoughts on the seed? I mean, it it straightforward. It, it felt like it was straightforward, and then. Boy, did those gates open up when it just started throwing everything at you, courtesy of Sheila. Oh, yeah. Like, I, we say it's straightforward, but, like, at the 20-ish minute mark, everything was open, which was mm -hmm. bad. <laughs> like, I had Twin Harp. I had the Hook. I had the Earth Crystal. I had Tower Key. I had Baron Castle I could go and do. There were so many options. And, you know, it's just a matter of trying to navigate which checks do I want to do, what one do I think will give me X objective, Y objective, where are the most bosses to look for, etc., etc. Mm. It was a big goose chase for a little while just to try and find, like, you know, one or two items that we were missing. Especially after seeing the Dark Imps at the Bip or Dwarf Castle 2 spot at the top of Zod. At that point, it's just a, okay, I have everything open to me. I need a Pink Tail or a Legend Sword. Where is it? Where is one of them? Can you uh the tower was the the top of the tower was the hot play that drove you to the seed. I am curious what drove you up tower before going and doing that dwarf castle. Oh, I did it afterward, I believe. Oh right, I'm sorry. I here was one who did that. I'm terribly sorry. Um no problem. I will want to call out that for that dwarf castle you went in specifically reset out and got a curse during how well have you been keeping track of your money up to that point um okay i guess <laughs> <laughs> like i knew uh going towards the twin heart that i was a little bit over ten thousand. i hadn't spent much there were some things that i wanted to buy like a black shirt but i couldn't and i know that like the zot one boss gives nine thousand gold the zot two boss gives i think six thousand gold um and then twin harp gives some gold so between the three of them, I should have had enough for the Cursed Ring, and I did, which was fortunate. So as soon as I saw the blue robe, I was like, okay, well, take stock. Can I afford it? Make sure. Yes, I can. Let's go grab it. Let's just blow this up with five or six quakes for the whole castle and continue on my merry way. Yeah, that was definitely a very heads up play and a uh, very good job of going and knowing the money you get from each of those uh, encounters. Is that something you specifically studied? Uh, yeah, some, it was ooh, a couple weeks into Swiss, like, I put together, like, a notepad sheet, and I was like, okay, how much gold does every boss spot in the game give? <laughs> so that way, like, you know, uh, the overworld circuit gave, gives, I think it was around, like, 10,000-ish, and then you can add more for Zot, add less, more for Dwarf Castle, continue doing that, 
for all of the spots that you might have to check before going underground. Add a stipulation for if you have a hook route for the money from the Mad Ogre chest and from the Ruby spot. I, I wanted to be prepared, so I kind of got a good, or I looked up everything and everything, or everything and anything about that money, so that way I could get at least a loose idea in my head for brackets. I mean, that preparation certainly seems to have paid off today, as you had such a clean run throughout everything. Thank you, uh, you just... So much. I mean, there was... Did you feel at any point that you had slowed down in the seat, or were you just feeling like you were uh, running through every check you could? I, it was a zooming one, that's for certain. I, I had <laughs> Quake on Palom early. I had the... Well, first we got the edge at, like, the nine-minute mark from <laughs> Package which just accelerates things a whole bunch, especially when you have some weaponry for him. Like, Mute, Full Moon isn't the greatest, but it will certainly get you through those overall checks, and that it did for me. So it was just a lot of acceleration early on in the mid-game. You pick up the Cecil, you get the X-Cow, you're just flying through everything. We had 10 key items at like 36, 37 minutes. It was... It was a very fast seed, and I was just dragging that seed in my pants the whole time. Yeah, you were, uh, you definitely had some very, very quick, everything going very quickly for you. I do want to shout out Ikir, finishing the seed with a time of 1 hour 13.29, with a bunk from Rosa, just, Zeromus was hanging on, throwing rocks, and Ikir just able to squeak out the wind with Rosa hitting Zeromus with a staff. <laughs> very nice to finish. Do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just too lag here. Very, very much so, GG's. I have one question for you, Pancras. I, sure I, I saw when you went into the march, and you went into the weapon shop, and, and you hovered over the cat claw for a second. What, what Was there <laughs> slight regret there? Like, I really want 60,000 right now. Like, uh, I, I had double poison. That. That's good <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> I, I've tempered my expectations since Swiss. <laughs> Double cat claws are so nice and everything, but it's just not feasible, especially with a 30,000 gold starting kit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to spend every last dime I have for a single cat claw for this party member that I might not even keep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, if I found the Sand Ruby earlier, he was out for Kane. I had a gun near Spear. I was ready. <laughs> but alas. But you did go and keep that young, and uh, you didn't really make any changes to your party after... You picked up the Cecil. That was a uh, very, you know, outside of that cane, were there any other characters you were hoping to go and pick up somewhere or were you pretty content with your party? I mean, for a little while in the mid game, you know, I would have taken a Fusoya if he showed up just cause, you know, you can't say no to him. If he was on the moon though, I would have said no to him. Uh, mm. Somewhere around end of Dwarf Castle, I was very content with my party. I had already gotten like you know, 110,000 XP or something silly from the Dwarf Castle fights with 10 key items on everybody. So might as well keep them through the end game, level them up on some eggs, get them ready to punch and ready to go. Sounds good. Well, GG's on your victory. Congratulations on advancing to the next round. Well, thank you. GG's again to Ikear. Great race. Looking forward to watching it back. And thanks to all of you on the Restream team for this one. Neobari, thank you most for having mercy after last night i appreciate it i appreciate it a lot <laughs> when the seed is almost half as long it's <laughs> just over just over and of course thank you baka and martin look forward to mm -hmm. watching back the commentary and thank you zeno cat for the tracking couldn't do it without all of you and i look forward to watching it back GGs all right and GG, have a sir. great rest of the night you too GGs. And it looks like we are uh, joined by Ike here as well. So, GG to you. Thank you, GG's. Yeah. Yep. Pancras definitely earned that win. I'll say, what what are... I, I posed the question in Pancras, but, uh, you know, the, the seed, you know, it's it started... I'm not going to say it started slow. You know, it kind of pointed you in directions. But boy, Sheila, as soon as it's like, here, here's Earth, here's, here's all these things, and now you have five checks you can go do. At that point, what, what what's going through your head? I need better characters. Um, <laughs> I, I there, so I'm like, okay, maybe there's a Cecil somewhere. Um, I went and checked Hook Route first, and that was nothing. But I had an exit I picked up, so I was easy. easy. 
get out of there. <laughs> and then Earth Crystal delivered. And so after that, we just, okay, let's go power Cecil up. Oh, hey, there's another item I need. Um, let's go underground, get some levels, and just start wrecking things. <laughs> That's amazing so what I mean, Excalibur will do for that, won't it? Yeah, I just didn't really have any good weapons for anybody else. That Edge had really weak weapons. Yang had poison, one poison claw. I didn't go. I didn't do the shopping that um, Pancras did. Mm -hmm. I think it was an interview. He has like all the gold stuff mapped out, which he, he's, he's an expert at this game. So I'm not so shocked I lost at all. Um, I didn't even look for curse rings. Yeah, that was that was one thing we saw when uh went into Tamra and Tamra was loaded to the teeth with all sorts of amazing items in the shops and yeah, that curse ring in that armor shop ended up uh paying out dividends unfortunately. That made the uh the gauntlet fight quicker. Mm hmm Taking hits every time. Um I made a few of the bosses quicker too. Um, I picked I was glad there was an Edward up on the moon for my anchor. I was hoping it wasn't gonna be a duplicate character. I did think about going and picking up the cane with the sand ruby just to be the anchor for me. Mm. But I figured I could also work with it if I, there was no anchor up there. I could figure something out. Um, but I decided to finish quickly because I knew Pancras was going to finish faster. And yep, he did. Yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely a very, very interesting seed in contrast with your first round. What... Uh... With all the checks open, what drove you to tower before that uh, dwarf castle check? Um, I didn't remember where I got the tower key. I think it was from. Actually, I really don't remember where I got the tower key from. Um, but it was available for me, and I think I had done Earth Crystal by then and had completely spaced that. That was a red guy because I was too excited about the Cecil that was on the on the ground. Ah. Uh. Um. So I completely didn't know that the my, my target was at dwarf castle so i figured I'll, I'll go do the tower first and then i'll go do dwarf um for me i went and checked the um the bay march first i found twin harp because i think i did twin harp and then went to dwarf i, I can certainly see up. feel the um oh yeah that's a great character and who was the boss again as i say every single time we do a hook route <laughs> I, I did that in a race there uh i did a practice race right before this where yeah we need to find um gauntlet to kill it and gauntlet was the Baron Key Castle, Baron Castle character that gave you the item. Mm -hmm. I completely like, oh, yeah. didn't pay attention to it. It's just yeah. something I do. Space it. Yeah, the age old joke of, you know, when you're doing practice races with friends, and it's like, uh, did anybody notice who the starting boss yep. was? Yep. All the time. Uh, whoops. All the Let time. me just start a new seed quickly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's just re roll it. That way everyone can see it. Let's but, just, you uh, know, start again, see who gives the key. Oh, oh, it's, it's that boss. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, definitely thanks, Nagamari, for not rolling a seed like yesterday. <laughs> they like the fast ones. I know I hate jet seeds, but I, I much prefer that after yesterday's race. I, was... I can't say I blame you after that one. It was truly jet. How are you feeling throughout just the majority of that seed when you just kept getting key item after key item and hitting objectives quickly? Uh, I was glad to get the tanky items I could level quickly. I just, uh, there were so many items there. I'm thinking, um, I remember seeing his Pancras. He's probably got some of these already. I'm, I'm probably behind, so I just have to go, go, go. And just hit my hit my checks. Um, but yeah, I'm being able to level quickly with the Sirens. Um, I had to go pick up two extra in order to get to where I wanted to be for the Zeromus, but I, it was just nice not having to figure out how to grind. Seems really over. generous to you while... Your opponent might not have been, though. You are unfortunately limited, eliminated from the tournament. How were your feelings on the uh, bracket phase and just the tournament overall? Uh, the tournament was great. I enjoyed all my races. I got to kill Zero almost twice with Rosa Box, so that was awesome. Um, yeah, all the all the races were, were great. Glad it was restreamed and that we put on good shows for everyone. Um, definitely GG's to Pancras. I'm sure he'll go far in the in the brackets. Um, I, well, I did a lot of practice for it, obviously not as much as he did. Um, but no, I mean, the whole tournament's great. Everyone putting on is great. We appreciate everyone restreaming and commentating and tracking. So thank you, Akshinov, Leo, Martin, Brockwood for the commentary and Silicap like for the tracking and I Rari for the restream. Yeah. And thanks to all the, the channels that are allowing us to put on the, the tournament. Yeah, and thank you for going and being a racer in this tournament. We wouldn't be able to put on a show without you and uh, a fantastic show. 
Yeah, very much so. So I'm assuming that, uh, I care that we can plan on seeing you in whatever the next tournament may be as well, correct? Yep, I like doing these, and now I'll be able to start setting up for tracking. Although I'm done having to practice for these. Good, yeah, we need more meat for the grinder. I mean, what? Hi. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huh? Yeah, no, we don't have, <laughs> we, we don't have an incredible <laughs> amount of matches going for you, so, uh, if you like free enterprise, definitely you know, keep an eye on, uh, Random Mania in this category in general, because we'll see a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Well, Martin, do you have any final questions for Ike here? I... 113. I win or lose, I am obscenely proud of that time. So very well played race to you. Thank you. I am... <laughs> Usually I've been around 130. So yeah, having a, a sub 75 is good. Yeah, yeah very much so. So GG once again. GG to everyone. There's some good races coming up today. Thank you again. This has been, like I said, a fantastic show. Yeah, very much so. Uh, Baka, what are we going to do now? Well, I would like to take a moment to uh, thank again Neobari for restreaming and Xenocat for tracking and you for joining my commentary as uh, <laughs> this was an exciting, fast paced race. It was. It was. I was. I, I said at the beginning, I'm like, yo, know, I, I would love a two hour seed after seeing the uh, one of the earlier races, but I'm okay with those too. This this was this was a nice little jet. I'm I'm very happy with this one. This seed was definitely all thriller, no filler. And uh, mm -hmm. with that, we're gonna go and be sending you on to another race on Random Mania Two. It is going to be the Vitasia versus Moonblaze Moonblaze Wolf, and uh, in progress. So feel free to join in that one. Do not, under any circumstances, spoil the results of this race, as many people do like to see these races live. I'm sure after this past hour, you're thinking that was an amazing watch, and I'd hate to have it spoiled for anyone. Don't, don't, don't be that individual. The newspapers hurt. Can't confirm. I have stories. I'm not allowed to tell them. Now I know why you fear that uh, certain sprite so much. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Baka, it was a pleasure. As it was with you. This is a great, fantastic time. Thank you for yeah. joining me. 10 out of 10 would do again. Zeno and Iobari, thank you for doing all the hard work and making it easy for the two of us. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get to see you again soon. Indeed, I will have to see you all later. Good evening. Yep.